much of the public, much of the electorate, has the same kind of opinions that you'd find amongst your slightly racist, pissed up uncle who'd rather not speak to at Christmas family get-togethers. This week I want to talk about another poll, this time on the potential reintroduction of National Military Service for men aged between 17 and 21. That was a YouGov poll conducted this week. 47% of the public wants to see a compulsory national service for 17 to 21 year old men. 43% are opposed, so there's not a clear majority for this thing, but it's pretty close, right? And I think that's actually something of a surprise. We got rid of military service, I think, in the 50s. What does it tell us about attitudes more generally? Well, actually, there's a real continuation with the polling from last week around empire colonialism. And it's a similar story in terms of the breakdown by age. 23% of 18 to 24 year olds support the idea, so not many, right? Under a quarter. While 64% oppose it. While 62% of the over 60s support it and 32% oppose it. So it's almost a kind of mirror image from old to young. We've got quite diverse attitudes on a range of things actually, which correlate with age, right? You could almost say we've got a culture war on the way. These over 60s, you know, who are they? They would like to see a return of the empire. They have no problem with Britain's colonial past. We know that. Overwhelmingly homeowners. Many of them aren't even paying mortgages anymore. They're not even worried about interest rates because they've paid off the mortgage already. They overwhelmingly vote conservative. There was a YouGov poll out, I think, November last year. It showed that the over 60s, they love David Cameron. The over 60s are pretty much the only age group which has this huge net approval for David Cameron. They just love the guy. So who approves of the Labour Party? It's 18 to 24s, it's ethnic minorities, and it's women. These same groups all net disapprove of the Conservative Party and David Cameron, right? Which is interesting. So Cameron's people, so to speak, the kind of core, the base, the kind of rock of the Tory vote, of it winning a general election in 2020, of it continuing to have a mandate to impose these profoundly disgusting policies on all of us, right? That mandate's coming from over 60s and it's coming from homeowners, right? And they tend to have these quite deplorable attitudes. By contrast, 18 to 24 year olds seem to have pretty good attitudes, right? And you would think that for Labour to win a general election, or at least to stop the Tories winning majority, right? Which is not that big, a big an ask. What that would require would be getting these same groups, BME, 18 to 24 year olds and women, getting them all not just to vote Labour, but to probably, in, to some extent, be kind of active advocates of, of the Corbyn cause. You look at US politics, 2000, George W wins a presidency, 2004, he wins a, wins a presidency again. That's the kind of low point of US politics, 2015, right? You've got a, okay, he's been a disappointment, but he was a moderately liberal progressive president, right? He's been outflanked by social movements to his left, which is pretty important, right? Black Lives Matter and Occupy are two of them, two of the most important. You've had an amazing things happen at the federal level of the United States, right? Uh, Same-sex marriage, drug decriminalization in places like Oklahoma of all places, right? Things are changing in the United States. Why are they changing? I've often talked about demographic changes, right? It's gonna be a minority majority country some, sometime in the 2050s, 2060s, right? Minority majority, what does that mean? It means that whites will be an ethnic minority in the United States. And that demographic change with Latinos, with African Americans, they overwhelmingly vote Democrat. That's changed the real terrain of American politics. That's one element of it, the demographic change, the ethnic change in the US. Another is demographic changes by age, right? So just millennials after 2008, after the Obama presidency, have just entered the political scene of American life and they're not going anywhere. They were a big element of Obama wing in 08 and they've been a huge element with Occupy, Black Lives Matter, and now Bernie Sanders. This guy could beat Hillary, that's a huge win. And it proves that millennials since 2008 are changing US politics. I think something similar could happen here. Could it happen before 2020? I'm not sure, but let's find out. So what do you think? You know what I think? I think this poll around reintroduction of national public service tells us that actually politics is changing massively. It's set to change because the attitudes of the old are really at odds with the attitudes of the young. Why don't you put those thoughts down on the hashtag? Hashtag I am Obastani. Reach out to me. Hell, call me an ages if you like. At Aaron Bastani at Twitter or just go for the organization, as Ash Sarka says, at Navara Media.